We just turned the corner and this is the view I have been looking for all day. Oh God, there it is, oh no. Oh, it's a big one and he's crossing the road and it's a big snake. This view is absolutely stunning. So come with me today as we explore the Santillario Agro Turismo and the Tuscan Hills. If you really want to experience Tuscany for yourself and not just in the overcrowded and clogged streets of Florence and Pisa, if your travels are for savoring the food, the wine and the breathtaking nature, then you need to visit an Agriturismo, which is a beautiful farm, hotel and locally sourced restaurant all rolled into one. But where do you find these mystical gems that sound, frankly, too good to be true? Well, mine is along an ancient Roman road, a pilgrimage route thousands of years old, far off the tourist path. And to really get out into those famous Tuscan hills, well, I'm gonna hike there the old fashioned way. And I'd love for you to join me. It's going to be the most beautiful and delicious day of my life. All right, everybody, this is day one, hour zero of my five day Italian pilgrimage to Siena, starting from right here in San Miniato at the Hotel Miravella. I wish for myself no blisters and no snakes. Let's hit the trail. I was like, how cool is this place? That's brilliant. And so that's the first kilometer down and 23 more to go. I hope they're all as pleasant as this one. The weather's still pretty good now as well in the shade. There's a wonderful breeze, just a little on the cold side, but um, I have heard from all the locals that today is going to be a hot one. In total, the All Trails app says that we've got like a six and a half hour hike ahead of us. I imagine we're gonna be much slower than that considering we're gonna be filming a lot, flying the drone, eating lunch, but the question is how much slower? I think my bet is on something like nine hours. We'll see how we do. And with that, we also need to give a fond farewell to San Miniato. It's been a really great home base to rest right before we get started. And it's a beautiful town to walk through with my pack on. <sighs> Walking uphill already. We've got about 24 kilometers to do today and maybe 600 meters of elevation. So it's gonna be probably the longest day of the whole Camino. But we've also been kind of walking and exercising and really ramping up over the past two weeks. So I think we should be ready for it. Though this is our first real day pack hiking. Now, perhaps unfortunately, though, we'll see how it goes. The first hour of this hike is entirely on the road. Now, I don't mind that when we're in the town. It's pretty beautiful after all, but I think in a minute, it's just gonna be on a dirt road. But I'm also keeping in mind that the truffle hunter we met yesterday, well, he said this section of the Via Francigena is the best. So hopefully it's gonna be a long, hard-earned, beautiful day. Oh my God, major crisis averted, or at least a uh, imagined crisis. We just finished cresting our first major hill and I had to like throw my backpack off because um, I thought the camelback where all my water was had ruptured, thus ruining all of our electronics. However, that wasn't true. Um, <laughs> the camelback is fine. All of the water I felt down the small of my back, that was sweat. <laughs> so yeah, it is getting a little hotter and oh, I was so worried. Like, could you imagine how bad that would be if all of our gear and all of my clothing just got drenched with liters of water? That was just me sweating my ass off. Anyway, break over, back to hiking. Let's get the pack on. It's gonna be just a little bit longer on this road until we actually hit the trail itself. That being said though, this road portion is not as bad as I feared. It's beautiful on all sides and the drivers aren't too crazy. I mean, we're not in Southern Italy after all. <laughs> <laughs> all things considered, I have hiked on much worse roads than this. Especially, I don't know if you remember the Camino in Spain where we were on that just, God, that farm dirt road for 13 kilometers. Oh, yeah. That was terrible. Or the, uh, the one that was next to like a dirt trail above oh, the freeway. Yeah, there was a main raised one and then a lower one and you're on like a little ridge in between. That had terrible ambiance. Yeah. Thank you. 
if you're familiar with the channel, perhaps even if you're familiar with my old Camino series back in Spain, you'll know I'm not exactly a novice walker, a novice hiker. I'm not great, but I do have a lot of experience in a lot of different countries. And I don't know, I thought Tuscany was gonna be so overrated and it's just not. It's so fantastic. And so we're officially done hiking the road section. And we can tell because we're with a little pilgrim buddy. In total, it was about six and a half kilometers from the door of the Mirabella to right here. And I managed to crush it in about an hour and 35 minutes. Granted, that's a little slower than what we've been told by some of the local guides, but I have a feeling they're a little wistfully optimistic. That being said, you probably would be able to do it a little faster than me. If you're packing a little lighter, you're not carrying so much gear, you're not stopping to film or talk to you guys. So when you add it all up, I think we've got a pretty decent pace going. Maybe we should have then left a little earlier this morning, I don't know. There's no way you're gonna be able to see this on camera, but right as we've turned onto the official pilgrimage route, once we've gotten off the road, I can see in those yonder hills, two more pilgrims going a little faster than me. I doubt we'll ever catch up with them, but it's nice to know we're not the only people on this trail. I'm sure we'll get lapped by some others later. Oh God, there it is. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh, stay away. Oh no. Oh, he's crossing the road. It's a snake. Oh, it's a big one and he's crossing the road and it's a big snake. Oh boy. God, I just really, I really don't like them. Oh. oh. Like, creep me the fuck out. If you're terrified of snakes as much as I am, comment below, give me some love. And if you think I'm an absolute idiot, comment that too, it boosts engagement. But before we get too deep into the trail section of today's pilgrimage, I do wanna say something maybe a little controversial, a little sacrilegious, and that's that I won't judge you if you take a taxi from San Miniato to the trailhead. It's pretty easy to do, and I think a few people do actually do it, but just don't tell anybody. A lot of people take the pilgrimages and the Caminos really, really seriously. I mean, I got a lot of hate on our last series just because we dared section hike it. You know, we hiked one week instead of like the month or two month long full route. As if I didn't want to do that, but I have a job back in Munich and other things to do. Which is actually why I like section hiking, because it lets you get out there, it lets you do a pilgrimage route, it lets you hike from town to town without having to actually do the full commitment. And I mean, who has time for that? I want to have time for that, but who actually has time for that? Now these are the kind of trail animals that I like to see. Plenty of legs, plenty of fur, and even some of them have got a good beard. How are you guys doing? All right, so we've just made it to the one third marker. We've done 8.5 kilometers in about two and a half hours, and we finally reached our first pilgrim's bench. And besides just a bench, there's also a book to sign your name, a handy little box here full of supplies just in case you're running out, along with a list of phone numbers just in case you need them, which is one of my favorite things about these long distance hikes. Everyone's always looking out for each other, even if you're not with them. So a pilgrim route really is kind of what it says on the tin. It's an ancient route through Europe from town to town that was taken by kind of a notable Christian official of some kind. The trails themselves obviously have been used by the military, by traders, and just by the people who live here for thousands and thousands of years. But it was the pilgrims who first really wrote down detailed accounts of where they stayed and what routes they took that people would then follow along for years and years to come. Specifically, the route that we're taking right now though, the Via Francigena was written down in 880 AD by Sigurik the Serious, the Archbishop of Canterbury. He took an incredibly long trek all the way from, naturally, Canterbury, all the way to the Vatican down in Rome. And on his return trip, 
he wrote down in excruciating detail where he went. This in turn then inspired so many more pilgrims to get out there and travel, which I think is just really cool. Kind of like the Christian near from home from over a thousand years ago. I'm really excited for this one though, because not only do I really want to get out there and see Tuscany, but I think only 1,800 people per year do this route. So it is way less popular and it needs a lot more love. And now I'm gonna get back to my lunch in peace. Whew, that was a damn good rest. I did not know I needed it until I sat down, opened up my food and well, never wanted to leave. But all good things must come to an end so we can move on to even greater things. So let's hit the trail. Let's try to crush another third a little faster. We don't have all day. Let's get moving. Oh my God. That might be the most beautiful rooster I have ever seen. He's massive. Where's the, oh no, there's a little chick. I just love going by all the farms. That was one of my favorite things on the Spanish Camino. I got to see a sheep being born and so many good puppies guarding their flock. It really was super cool. And so to go by this one, which is half vineyard, half olive grove, and then all chicken is so much fun. <laughs> You couldn't ask for better timing. See, how cool is that? Just as I was telling you. Canterbury, 1,311 kilometers away, and Roma, only 312 to go. But we'll be stopping at Siena. Ah, I wish I had time to go to Rome now. And I think something that's just so bittersweet about traveling at the human scale is you need to get really comfortable with FOMO, the fear of missing out. Why? Well, as I travel along these wonderful hilltops, I can see countless tiny villages with amazing little towers that there is no way I will ever be able to visit. They look amazing, but at this speed, there's no way I will ever be able to get to them. And that really is just something you need to be comfortable with. You're not going to see everything. That being said though, it's not all bitter. It is also sweet because the things that I am doing, the places where I am based, the hikes that I'm taking, well, I'm really immersed in them. It's that classic debate between breadth and depth, right? If you want to travel really broadly and see a little bit of everything, become a master of nothing, then you probably shouldn't do this. But if you like to travel deeply, if you want to meditate and get immersed in this environment, really feel it deeply, then this is definitely something for you. Check this out, look what we found. We were walking right through the middle of a vineyard. It was so beautiful. And then we came across this. I'm not a massive urban explorer and I'm pretty sure some parts of this are still in use. I see fresh bales of hay over in the corner. So I'm not gonna disturb anyone's property. I think that would be kind of rude, but it definitely is really cool to look at. I see some really old stone milling plates on the ground and it's really cool artwork of a donkey running a mill. Though that must have been a long, long time ago as one of these stones has actually been split by a tree root. But I have no idea. I'll tell you what though, there's just something about ruins that really sparks my imagination. Imagining all the different people and their lives that have gone on here and now it's just being reclaimed by the land. As cool as that was, enough of a pit stop. Let's get back on the trail. You know, if you'd asked me two days ago what I really thought of Tuscany, I probably would have told you that I think it's a little overrated. I mean, I very well might be the world's most overexcited curmudgeon. Like, I don't know, with the amount of people who go to Florence and just like how much they talk about Tuscany, I just kind of assume there's no way it could ever live up to that hype, that it has to be overrated and that people need to get out more, if you know what I mean. But no, this hike has changed everything for me. 
I mean, I do still think Florence is overrated, don't get me wrong, but Tuscany itself? Nah, that's magic. There's no way you're gonna be able to see that, but like two deer just like hopped into the tall grass. Oof, scared me, just came out of nowhere. The grass is insanely tall and I don't have a Pokemon, so I can't go in there. Uh-uh, there are rules around these things. This view is absolutely stunning. We just turned the corner and this is the view I have been looking for all day. And I think we're gonna be staying just over on that hill over there. Oh, it's gonna be magical. I am so excited. So how about we pick up the pace, crush these last few kilometers, and let's get to the amazing villa. And just like that, our hike is over. 24 hard earned kilometers, 600 meters of elevation, but it's all been worth it to get right here. The Santillario Agroturismo, a historic Tuscan farm turned into a luxury villa and gourmet restaurant. And so what is an agroturismo anyway? Well, it's a very innovative solution to a very unfortunately modern problem, which is that fundamentally in post-World War II heavily industrialized free trade conglomerate run economies, how exactly is a small farmer supposed to compete with uh, big wheat? Well, naturally, you're not gonna be able to beat them on price, you just don't have the scale for that. So Italian farmers turned inwardly and thought, well, what do they have that a big company never could? And that is hospitality. And so what you see in agroturismo is the connection between agriculture and tourism. Comment below if you already picked up on that. But what does this mean in practice? Well, essentially, Italian farmers take their incredibly historic and beautiful farmhouses and convert them into luxury or sometimes basic accommodations for us city folk to come out here into nature. And then once they have us here, well, they take all of that amazing produce that, well, wouldn't do so well in a supermarket and they give it to a local connected restaurant for gourmet dining experiences. So it's hard to argue that you don't get the best of everything here. Amazing historic accommodation, incredible food, views to die for, and I even hear they have a pool. Oh my God, <laughs> not a snake. They have special houses for cats. Oh, that means there's gonna be a farm cat around here somewhere. We should go find him. Oh, I should also just take a moment to say that this is not sponsored in any way. I'm paying for all of this out of my own pocket. I walked here on my own two feet and I'll be leaving the same way tomorrow. They've just given me gracious permission to film and fly my drone. So all opinions are my own and they have no input on the video. And as if I couldn't ask for a better hotel concierge, is a chubby black cat to lead the way. Though I think he's more interested in the birds than he is taking me to my room. Terrible service. It's important to note that not all agroturismo locations are gonna be like Santillario. Some are a lot more basic, some are gonna be a whole lot more modern. It really is up to the farmer to decide how they want to present their location. Not to mention size is also super variable. You'll have some like Santillario with cozy complexes and many different rooms, and you'll have some, I can even see one just across the valley, that's one small villa that you could rent out for a family. My room specifically is gonna be in the building just behind me. I'm staying in number six, and I have not seen it yet. I I am so excited though. I mean, it looks amazing from the outside. Please look good on the inside. And what's cool about where I'm staying is that this building itself is not just for one person. Even back in the day, this would be a complex for many different families to live with this shared common area. They even have the old oven still left in the wall. I mean, this shared communal area is beautiful. I mean, the brickwork. Oh. I love things like this, it's so pretty. But now let's actually take this pack off finally and see the room.
I felt as light as a feather strolling around those immaculate Tuscan grounds without having to have my pack on. And we spent a little time meeting the local wildlife too. And these guys have legs, so it's totally okay. Naturally, the pool was picturesquely set into the gorgeous landscape but it was far too cold to tempt me in today. So instead, I basked in the ambiance and read my book until dinner time. We chose to arrive post sunset for that late night dining aesthetic Italy is most famous for. I didn't oversleep, I promise. No matter when you arrive though, this restaurant absolutely delivers. Just look at it. The wine was local and incredible. The chef was so good that you may as well just throw a dart at the menu. No matter what you'll hit, you're gonna get a world-class meal. It doesn't matter what you choose here. Everything was just so creative and delicious, especially the pasta dishes, which were plenty hearty after all of those kilometers, yet restrained enough in their richness such that we didn't feel dead after eating them, which is really important because we've got another big day ahead of us tomorrow. The meal went down just right. It was perfect. I'll put the Agriturismo on screen one more time for you to write it down if you've forgotten, as I'd highly recommend it. I could not have asked for a better place to rest my legs on this incredible ancient trail. And now is the time of the video where I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. Because even though this video is winding down, the trip is definitely not. Over the next few days, we're going to be hiking to some of the most exceptional towns that the Via Francigena has to offer. From cities made rich by pilgrim traffic, to fortresses that were created to keep them safe. So do subscribe if you want to see more. It means the world to us. But if you're looking for something else to watch right now, well, I'd recommend my truffle hunting in Tuscany video. The personal story of what we got up to in San Miniato the day before we began this epic hike. Whisked off into the Tuscan hills with a third generation truffle hunter, we made some grand discoveries before taking our spoils back to his family kitchen for unmistakably the best meal of my life. This series, guys, if you love fine food and finer nature, it is perfect. Even in such an over-touristed area as Tuscany, there are just so many oases to find. It is insane. It is incredible. So if you've liked this video, I know you're gonna love that one and everything coming up. So really, give us a sub, hit us up on Instagram, and join the Near From Home community. And with all that said and done, I'll see you in the next video, no matter where that might be.